I can't believe we are halfway through the month of January. It seems that things are moving so, so fast, and that is a great thing. We want things to move fast, fast, fast. I want to remind everybody that's listening again about the date when we are bringing in Ann Newberry and Barbara Sundin into Texas. And so you want to look for that flyer. It will be going out through the offices, and that's going to be the weekend of April 10th and 11th. So we are super, super excited. That is exclusively for the people that are participating in the push call. And um, it is a limited amount of space, so make sure that you get that in as soon as you see the flyer go out. Well, tonight we're going to talk about recruiting radically radically getting in your red, getting on target for your car, becoming a sales director as a director, moving up to that next level. There's nothing I love more uh, than to move people fast, to see people move fast, but to move them strong and to make sure that when they are in those leadership positions that they have learned the skills, that they have laid down the foundational principles and that you know that they're they're leading by example, you know, and they are consistent with your business. And Dawn the national that's going to be sharing uh, tonight. She is a master at this business and a master at building her team, her national area. She, I'm going to read her accolades. She has led the, the company um, as a director, as a sales director, as a national. And so she's going to share the skills that it takes to build a team. And, you know, it's funny. A lot of people always say, you know, how do you get good at recruiting? You get good at recruiting by, first of all, asking yourself, could you recruit yourself? You know, would you recruit yourself? You know, because if you don't believe in what you're doing, nobody else is going to believe in what you're doing. So, you know, you've got to believe first, you know, in what you're doing and know where you're going. And then when you learn the skills and you repeat it, you know, find the master that is good at what they do and repeat it. And you, and you, when you continue to repeat what you see someone who's an expert at, when you continue to repeat it, that's how you get good. So none of the nationals on this call, um, we got, we'd never got here because we were just born with those skills. It was the repetition that brought us the skills. And so I know that you are going to totally enjoy Dawn as she shares. I want to read a little bit about her. Uh, 28 years ago, Dawn Sweeney was 23 and engaged to be married to Larry living, living in Cleveland and working 60 hours a week in a retail management training program that she was recruited for out of the University of Michigan. The Mary Kay product line opportunity was introduced to her by a new consultant who was asking women to be face models for her MK portfolio. Wow, that's exactly how I got introduced. Uh, Dawn had an MK makeover and fell in love with the skincare set. She agreed to attend a Mary Kay recognition event, and at the event she saw women who were excited about sitting on thrones and wearing crowns and sashes. She was also impressed with the income potential, but most of all, fell in love with the culture of women, encouraging and supporting each other to their best version of themselves around the priority of God first, family second, and career third. She bought her starter kit that night with a post-data check, and the rest is history. The last 28 years have been spent in small towns like Douglas, Arizona, on the Arizona-Mexico border, St. Simons Island, Georgia, Metro Detroit, Detroit, and in 20 28 years, Dawn has built her business, single, married, babies, 24 months apart, C-sections, no family around, federal agent husband working lots of hours, travel sports, two open heart surgeries for her son, both kids through college, and now with a daughter, who is the youngest pink Cadillac director in Michigan, senior sales director. Alden Sweeney. That's so exciting. So, so exciting. Some of Dawn's career highlights are top director trips, 12 out of the 15 years all around the world. 12 out of the 15 years. Two years of over one million in the unit and unit production. One million in unit production and the number one unit in the Emerald Division and number six in the nation. Her highest commission check, not including her free cars and sales, product sales for one month, is over $27,000. And a 1099 of over 100000 for the last 20 years and over 200000 for the last three years. Over 50 carats of diamond rings, bar pins, bumblebees, and the coveted Miss Go Give Award. Donna is currently a national sales director who takes her role as a legacy leader very seriously. Her skyscraper area is building to inner circle as they support the growth of multiple national areas in the next five years. Yes, yes, yes. Please welcome from Canton, Michigan, independent national sales director, Don Sweeney. Thank you, Jamie. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Gosh, yeah. We're halfway through January, and we had a 90-day push that we started in November, and we're, what, 
75, 76 days into that. So we're five-sixths of the way through this PUSH program. And so I know some of you may not have started at the very beginning because you may have become a consultant sometime in this last 90 days. But, you know, particularly for those of you who have been in this program from day one, where have you pushed from and to? So where did you start from career path-wise? How many people were on your team or how big was your unit? If you're a sales director, how, how big was your unit 90 days ago and how big is it now? As a consultant, how big was your team? You know, have you gone from a consultant to a senior, senior to a red, red to a team leader, team leader on target car, on target car, DIQ, future director, and then for a sales director, unit size, where has it grown to? Because we, we start, you all probably have already heard, if not, you're going to hear um, from your national that we are, the four nationals decided we're, this is working. And it's working for the people who are pushing through and making it work. So we're going to offer Push 2.0 that's going to continue on for the next 90 days. So look for that flyer, get that flyer from your national, get registered, do not wait to the last hour before the first call. Um, but I know that all of you have been pushing through thoughts. I, I have to believe that 100% have pushed through thoughts, but while you're pushing through your old ways of thinking to line it up with new ways of thinking, we want to make sure that there's activity that support the new thoughts. Um, that create different choices, that these new thoughts are creating different choices in actions, or you are going to increase your frustration. Because increased knowledge without increased activity gives increased frustration. And I don't know about you guys, uh, if there's anyone that's listening to this that needs extra frustration in their life, then that is a perfect formula for it. But if not, we really want to evaluate you know, some numbers. If you go back to my um, push call, it was the number five push call. Re-listen to that if you haven't um, or listen to it because I go through in depth through a, a formula that I recommend that you use when you get to points that you feel like you may be doing your best, you're not getting the results that you desire. The first thing that I encourage you to do is to look at numbers, new leads that you've brought into your business, new faces that you put the product on, interviews, and directors add on unit size. The second thing you look at is your target market. The third is skill, and the fourth is you. What I want to spend my time on tonight is that third section, skill, and zero in on some of the skill-focused um, training um, for recruiting and team building, but honestly, unless you – you personally, you, no one else, you, not your team, not your unit, not your national, you, unless you increase your activity, your number of faces, that activity, that specific activity in January with what we have left of January, you're not going to have more momentum or the push that you were promised in the last 90 days is not going to give you the desired results. I honestly think that we've held up our end of the deal, the four nationals. We promised you a playbook, the motivation, the inspiration, strategy, equipping, training, but the activity has to increase for those things to get that desired result of the push. Mary Kay always said that when you needed to turn something around quickly. And most of you probably need to turn something around quickly because most of you are probably 80% of behind where you want to be for your New Year's goals. If you've been in since July 1st and you were at seminar and got a deposit of those dreams in your heart, most of you are behind at halftime. And that's very normal. But what's going to make the difference between the people who get to their goal is going to be what they do right now. And Mary Kay's solution was always, always, always a 10-party week. That was the solution for a big turnaround. You know, she shared, I had shared this on the director's push call, um, and Newberry shared that Mary Kay Ash taught her that whenever people were complaining about things not happening, like they'd want them to. 
that Mary Kay would always go back to the core of the issue. And she said there was three areas, there's three problems if you were not um, happy about where things were going in your business or what was happening. One, you were not managing your time well enough. Two, you were not focusing on where this work pays off. Or three, you've not done enough of what you need to do to get to where you want to be. So her, her solution was always a 10-party week. Or, you know, really, if you're serious about pushing through, you're going to get a 10-party week done this month. If the 10-party week is just like, okay, I can't even get my head around that, and I will tell you guys, I mean, don't even try and get your head around it. It is not paced. It is not normal. I've done a couple of those in my career because Mary Kay Ash would ask us to, and I have to dig out letters that she would write us. I have congratulation um, notes from Mary Kay Ash. It is crazy. You, uh, you don't know if you're coming or you're going. You have sales tickets all over. You have cash piling up all over. You have products coming and going. It is just nuts. But at the end of it, it's a really good nuts. You have piles of cash. You have piles of referrals, and you have piles of appointments on your date book. And on the other side of that, a 10-party month literally is a, it's a coast through the park. It seems so easy. It stretches you to a whole new level. But honestly, if you're not going to do that in January, do a 10-party month. Between now and the end of the month, get 30 faces in. It doesn't have to be 10 separate drive-out to 10 parties. I mean, you can double and triple book at your house, your meeting space, et cetera. Or minimum five. I really think if anyone is plugging into the PUSH program, five parties in January would be minimum so that you could end this PUSH program in momentum. With five parties, you could have ten parties on your books for February. So that, that's your choice, which is better for you, a ten-party week, a ten-party month, or a five-party month. Okay, let's talk about recruiting skills. So while this activity is being increased, getting yourself in front of more faces, you may have come into Mary Kay um, during a, a recent time period, actually the last decade, where people sell products at facials and parties or classes, but the majority of the recruiting is done through events at your success meeting, at events, uh, conference calls, marketing videos, etc. And that, so recruiting and se selling are done separately. And I have to tell you, that is not Mary Kay's original marketing plan. Her original marketing plan, plan was book, coach, sell, and recruit. And there's always going to be people that you jump to the recruiting first, but on a whole, the majority of your business works by book, coach, sell, and recruit. And recruiting is done while you're selling. They're not separated. You don't do a selling appointment and then go home and go, oh, I'm going to call an inviter to my meeting, or I'm going to invite her to something. You're doing the four-point recruiting plan at all your appointments every single time. So, and I'm not saying don't take guests to meetings. It's not one or the other. You want pipelines in your business that you have guests. You have a goal every week how many guests you're going to have at meetings. You have your date book highlighted. These are the events you have going on. And then you have times highlighted that you're doing your facials and your parties. And you have specific goals of how many guests you want at your events during the week and how many that you want um, that you're going to get in front of with the product and the opportunity during the week. Because you will find that people who are recruited from parties do parties. They get inventory. They, they get hostess lists. They get hostesses. It, it just breeds party building consultants, whereas people who are recruited through events tend to build through events. And so you want both of those. The party people have to learn to bring people to guests, guests to events, and the consultants who are recruited through events, they have to learn to get out in the field and do parties. We need people coming in through both of those avenues. As a career path consultant, that's someone who wants to move up the career path. That's what you're on the push call for. Um, the main reason you do selling appointments is to find recruits. That's the number one reason, is to find team members. The second reason is to get future business. That's your referrals and your bookings. The third is the sales. That just kind of pretty much happens once you learn your a skincare class, you know, how to teach skincare and fill their skincare needs. But that's cash flow to pay for your business. The four-point recruiting plan, honestly, it scares me because when I go to appointments and I ask people to share with me the four-point recruiting plan, they look at me with these glazed-over eyes like, what is she talking about? Like, 
you know, I know it's like a term, but it's not something you're doing. You don't own it. It's becoming a lost art. And, you know, the four-part recruiting plan, it's actually written in your Mary Kay date book. You can go on to Mary Kay and touch, and I think there's tutorials on it. Um, I, if you go to Dawn Otten Sweeney on YouTube, Dawn Otten Sweeney Skincare Class, you can see me do the four-part recruiting plan. Um, for those of you who use my boot camp downloads, number four is the four-part recruiting plan. But you guys, I want to go over this. I want to pull this apart. And so I don't care how seasoned you are, I want you to listen to this. Because even if you're doing it, you're not teaching it. Because our, the majority of the consultants out in the field are not using the four-point recruiting plan. Because if they were, we'd have higher recruiting. Because if, all, if you rely on all your, your recruiting to happen technologically, that's through conference calls and, or through events, you guys, you're, you're you should always be out in the field more than you're at events because that, I mean, that's like the um, equation of the business. Also, too, technologically, over telephones and conference calls, you've got to go through way more numbers than you do when people are sitting across the table with products in between you talking about the business. So, you know, keep an open mind. I want you to listen to this because either I want you to listen for you to do it and tweak it, or I want you to listen for you to pass this on. Four-point recruiting plan, prior to the four points, we're coaching the hostess and pre-profiling. So in those pre-profiling conversations with your, the people, women who are coming to your parties, whether you're doing that technologically or verbally, um, in addition to finding out what they're most concerned about, you know, with their skin, what they're most looking forward to um, learning, because you want them coming for more than just helping their sister-in-law out for hostess credit, so it's more like a hair or a nail appointment for her. Women show up at their hair, hair and their nail appointments. But you're asking her, so tell me, you know, what do you do with your time? Great. If there's any, one thing that you could change in your life right now, what is it? Fantastic. I want to know what I'm, I'm getting into at a party or a facial or double facial. I want to know, you know, what you're looking for. Is there some dissatisfaction there? This whole process is a scavenger hunt. You're looking for, you know, dissatisfaction in their life, a reason why Mary Kay could serve them in some way. Because unless they perceive that there's something they need in their life, they're going to be unwilling to make the changes necessary to get different results in their life. So actually the four-part recruiting plan starts in the pre-profiling, pre-profiling of the guest, and you're asking the hostess those same questions. And then actually the first step of the four-part recruiting plan is asking the hostess, you know, of all the women that are coming to your party, which one do you think would be the best Mary Kay Beauty consultant? You know, who do you think is the most entrepreneurial? Who's the most resourceful? Ask for traits that you're looking for, because she may not know what it even takes to be successful at Mary Kay. You know, back prior to me being in Mary Kay and going to an event and actually seeing what this was all about, if you would have said, who do you think would be good at Mary Kay? I would have said, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know people who would go into drug sales and just want a little bit of extra money. I'm just not at that season of my life, and that's not how I'm wired. That's not who my peer group is. And But once I went there, then I then – you know, if she would have said, who's the most entrepreneurial? That's a totally different question than who do you think would be good at Mary Kay? Um, who's resourceful? Those are things I'm looking for. So, you know, all the women that are coming, who do you think that would be best at doing what I do? And I'm looking for women. And give some traits that you're looking for. So that's the first part. The second part is when you're going through your skincare class, making sure that you're talking about the company, talking about Mary Kay Ash, you know, like you know her, like you've read her autobiography, <laughs> like you've read it recently, like you like are grateful to this person. And then LaRonda on the push call, push number three, she was talking about your passionate I story. You know, we, we'll call it your before, now, and future story. That's a Kathy Halut term. You know, what did you do before Mary Kay? Why are you doing it now? And what are you, why are you doing this for your future? You guys, they don't know what a national is. They don't even know what a director is. They know what a free car is. They know what free insurance is. They know what an extra $1,000 or 500 bucks into their family budget for doing four parties, for working 13 hours a month. Um, that's an extra $6,000 a year for working 13 hours a month. That resonates with people. That's gas money. That's tuition. That's paying down debt. So those are the things to include in your future story. And honestly, your before, now, and future, your passionate I story, you got to get it down in like two minutes. And the most important part of it is that it's your story because God gave you your story to attract the people that you're supposed to be leading. And you got to be excited about it because if you're scared to tell it, they're 
not going to be compelled to follow you. I mean, this is your story. There's nothing to be scared of. I mean, you tell them your story and what you're excited about. People, they, I mean, women love drama, obviously, because sometimes they just create it. If they don't have enough of it going on. I mean, they love watching soap operas. They love watching movies. We love crying. We love laughing. It, it, they, they like, they want to see some passion there versus just monotone. I mean, really do your before, now, and future story. Do it on your director's boxer so she can hear your voice. Because honestly, I mean, I can tell. I wouldn't sign up with someone that's just like droning on or boring or not excited or not going anywhere. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have joined. Third part of the four-point recruiting plan is to, you know, say, watch what I do. And this is, used to be in our flip chart. We used to read this, and I encourage you to still have that. And you guys, your, your beauty book, I mean, I, I, I hate that we don't have a flip chart because the beauty book does not give you enough information to really teach a good skincare class and remember everything. And so write notes in it. Make your own flip charts so that you have notes so that you don't forget these things that are important, the four-point recruiting plan. And so we were taught that you always said, you know, watch what I do. So after you've told the Mary Kay story, your before, now, and future story, your Cracker Jack, you know, I story, whatever you want to call it, um, watch what I do. Because Mary Kay said there's a new Mary Kay beauty consultant at every party. And then you don't say anything. And we were taught that you stood there and you looked around the table and you're looking at them in the eye and you're looking around the table and they, you don't say anything and they start telling on each other because they know each other. This is, they're sitting next to their sister-in-law and their coworker and their friend. And so they'll go, oh, my gosh, Stephanie, you should do this. Like, you do our makeup before we go out all the time. Or, Jennifer, you were just saying that you needed some extra money, you know, for that um, 50th birthday party you want to do for your husband. Or you were saying that you need some extra money, you know, because you, you want to pay off your student loans faster. They start telling each other. And, again, you're on a scavenger hunt. Your job is to find out, because the goal of this is to figure out at the end of your individual consultation who you want to pick to be on your team. And so we would just be quiet. They'd start telling each other. And I'd say, okay, just watch what I do. Watch what I do. And then um, at the end, if you have any questions, actually I'll give you a chance to ask a few questions and get a door prize after we go through your skincare and before I tell you how the products come. But um, in an individual consultation, I can answer some other questions for you. But if you refer someone to me, you know, really listen, watch what I do, because you guys have friends all over the country, you know, that on Facebook you're in contact with, and maybe after the holidays they're talking about needing extra money. You may know some women that want to earn cars. You may, I mean, depending on who's at that party, if they're young moms, you know, you're talking about stuff that young moms may want, like sanity, time out with their girlfriends, a little bit of extra money to go have a pedicure, um, you know, a way out of a job so their kids aren't in um, daycare, maybe a way to pay for daycare. I mean, you talk to the group – um, the college students, oh, my gosh, the statistics, 85% of the college students last year did not, 85% came home because they couldn't get a job that would support them, not because they're, you know, doing something entrepreneurial to build them up. They're coming home because they couldn't get a job to support themselves in their field, and they have an exorbitant amount of student loan debt. So if you're talking to students or parents of students, I mean, you gear – these um, ticklers to them, but I want to give them $50 in product, always open to my um, customer base. If they refer someone to me that becomes a consultant on my team anywhere in the country. So that's the third part of the four-point recruiting plan. I like to put a 3.5 into the four-point recruiting plan before we go to the individual consultation. You know, I've, I've in the pre-profiling, I've asked them, you know, what changes, if they could make any change in their life right now. I've um, asked the hostess because she knows them better than I do. Um, obviously, you have to have a party to be able to talk to a hostess. So that's why I started this with talking about parties. Um, you're talking about Mary Kay, your before, now, and future story, um, asking them who they think the Mary Kay beauty consultant at this party is going to be, giving them the incentive to give me referrals. So prior to doing the close, uh, out of the four-port recruiting plan, 3.5 would be, I like to play the ticket game. So you just take your tickets and you say, okay, 
Um, I share with you guys that I am earning my car and Mary Kay um, in the next four months. And so I just want to see what kind of questions, what people are most interested as far as opportunity goes. So just for two minutes, I'm going to give you a ticket not to ask me a product question. I'll answer those afterwards to ask me a question about how the Mary Kay business works for you to be an educated talent scout so I can be giving you those $50 on product for the referrals or um, if this is something you'd ever consider for yourself. And so give them a ticket for every question they ask about the business and then have um, a, a um, travel size per size hand cream or pull a PCP apart and wrap it up or a, a color card is nice. Um, the little mascara travel size, the little demos, those are nice too. Just wrap it up be pretty, um, and they get that. The ticket game, what it does is I want to see who's going to ask questions because, again, I'm on a scavenger hunt to fit it, figure out at the end of the individual consultation who I want to talk to. And, you guys, this part is really important that you don't take 20 minutes to do marketing. These people have come to a skincare class. Also, even if someone is really interested in the opportunity, they'll say, oh, my gosh, I can't wait to talk to you at individual consultation. I'm going to answer all those questions for you. Because otherwise, I used to be so excited about people asking questions, I'd let them kind of railroad the um, skincare class on a whole marketing twist because I'd rather just talk about the opportunity um, with them all. But you know what, then people kind of feel like that's the bait and switch. I came here for a skincare class and now it's turning into a marketing thing. I know I've been at direct sales presentations and it's turned into far more marketing than the product you came to see. And I don't like that how that feels. I don't want that to be part of our Mary Kay reputation. I don't think that's operating with high integrity. And so if you've told them you're going to take two minutes, take two minutes. We're not doing this. Like you're doing this to pick up information of who to pick at the end of the party. Some people also, if people are asking a lot of questions, they can tell people after the individual consultation, um, I you know, would be happy to give you, you know, a half-off item or a free lipstick or mascara for staying after. After the people who just want to buy product got their sales you know, closed up, that's an option too. So 3.5, I like to do the ticket game for like two minutes, and then the fourth step of the four-point recruiting plan is at your individual consultation, you've, you know, which set's best for you, you've rescheduled them for their color appointment, and then you pick out one or two people. And this is something I think we've really gotten away from. I think we're li like, okay, I'm just going to do marketing to, for everyone at the skincare class. And you, that's fine to share with everyone, but Mary Kay taught us that you picked out one or two people, the sparkler, the people that you really want on your team, that you liked because of how they answered questions, how they asked questions, how they interacted. And I would say, okay, Jamie, at every party, I always pick out one or two people I'd most like to work with. And here, it's you for sure. I, I just like you. I would love you to be on my team because I can tell that whatever you do, you do it with excellence. I can tell that if you did Mary Kay, you'd be a rock star in Mary Kay. I, also, too, I would like to spend more time with you. Like, I like to pick women that I'd want to be, you know, friends with so we get to spend more time while we're building this business. If I gave you more information, would you listen to this, like a 25-minute message you could listen to on your way to work tomorrow, and I could touch base with you. I'll take you out to lunch, or we can touch base over the phone. It, which is better for you? So I have information there for her. Um, I may have a time set up that I'm going to talk to her the next day. And if she's like, you know, I, if she starts to ask me questions, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to give you take paper agreements, you guys, paper agreements, because sometimes you don't have Wi-Fi in people's houses. You don't have time to do that. You want to continue closing these sales up and then give her the agreement to say, you know what, it, I actually – you may decide she's already bought the product. She's already rebooked. If you fill this out, the starter kit is 100 bucks. You have your sheets that show what come in a starter kit because you're a prepared recruiter. You have your recruiting information. Have her sit over there to say, take a look. I mean, you can take a look at this. You guys on your – you could have a recruiting um, video. You could have her call and listen to that. You could have stuff for her to listen to where you wrap up the rest of the sales. She can fill out the agreement if she wants. I'd give her incentive. Just say, actually, tonight, if you decide that you want to get your starter kit before you leave, you can get the microdermabrasion set, or you can get the roll-up bag. I mean, something she didn't purchase that you give her, you know. So – but you, you make her feel special, and you tell her why you want her on your team. 
because, you know, people I don't think are doing that. And Mary Kay taught us, you, everyone has a sign around their neck that says make me feel important. I think that's a big missing piece. Um, well, if you're not doing the four-point recruiting plan, you're doing none of that. But I think that's a big missing piece. It's, people are doing all this marketing at parties, but they're not picking people out and telling them why they want them on their team. Um, I do think that you should be prepared to get agreements at a party because there's some people that it, you're not going to get back together with. So how is that going to look? Be prepared for that. Some consultants and directors keep starter kits on hand. You know, they have their mom order a starter kit and they reimburse them for it. So you could actually take it there so she could walk home with the starter kit and then you have her starter kit shipped to you. That is handy. You guys don't tell them to go home and send them a link. You you take the agreement home with them. You know, you, you, you take it home filled out. Or if she wants more information and she's going to listen, then you have a time set up with her the next day. And let's talk about how that follow-up looks. So you call her the next day at a specific time. Now, I'm going to call you tomorrow. Now, I'm going to call you in 24 hours. What time tomorrow? Noon, 1, or preferably to get together. But if that's not going to happen, you have a specific time as an appointment. I want an appointment time because I want to see if she's going to be there. Because if people aren't going to show up for an appointment time that I made with them, unless it's an emergency, then that's a pretty good indicator that they're not going to be a high priority of where I invest my time, and it may not be someone that I want to do business with. And so I, but I don't know that to be true if I don't set up a specific time. Because if someone doesn't set up a time with me, then I know it doesn't matter what time. If it's like an open house. If I show up, great. If I don't, I don't. So I set up a specific time. And so I'm calling, you know, Jamie. Hey, Jamie, this is Dawn. I'm Mary Kay. How are you? Great. Did you have a chance to listen to the uh, marketing call on your way to work today? Nope. Okay. Awesome. No, nope. No big deal. Um, after last night, share with me, um, if you ever did start a Mary Kay business, what would the reason be? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great. So you'd, I'm hearing you say that this, you know, you'd like the flexibility of it. You like the income potential of it. Um, this could be a way to potentially get out of your other job and work around being a single mom better. Okay. Awesome. Um, what questions or concerns? What would hold you back? What do you need to know to be able to make that $100 decision? Because that's really what we're talking about right now, to purchase that starter kit. Okay? So I'm going to answer any questions that she has. And uh, you guys, I want to cover like the most commonly heard um, objections and how uh, you know, it's, it's not a canned thing. I don't want you to go, okay, I got to, like, remember exactly what Don said, because if this person says this, I want to say this. If this person says this, you guys, then it's like a, you're a canned salesperson. Listen to the person. You always want to overcome their objection with their reason why. Always. And then what we're doing is we're giving them a different way to look at things, a different way to structure their time, their life, their thoughts to make different choices, to get different results. Our job is to give them those, that option to think a different way, thus do a different way, thus get a different way. If they're unwilling to, though, I'm going to give them two or three opportunities in this conversation, but if they're unwilling, then I'm just going to ask them for a referral. I'm going to pursue them because we've already rebooked their facial, their um, color appointment, and then try to turn that into a party. So we already have that down on the date book. I mean, you just see the wisdom of Mary Kay's um, marketing plan. Because if you really do it this way, if you're just doing an interview and you don't have an appointment set up, you don't really have a reason necessarily to get back together with her. And if she's not using the product, you really don't have a reason to get back together with her. Whereas if she was just at a party and you close the sale, she's washing the products down the drain every night and selling herself on how fabulous they are. And then her friends start to ask her about it. So that's going to be layering down the line if she didn't start. And also, too, she has an appointment reset up, so you have another built-in time to see her again. I mean, you just look at the wisdom, and when we take things out of order, and when we don't do things how Mary Kay did them, we actually make this business harder on ourselves. We have to deal with a lot more numbers, and we deal with a lot more frustration. So um, if she is um, telling you, okay, I, I want to do it for, to make extra money, but time is an issue, um, I flat out ask them, instead of me going through all these acrobats of, you know, do this, do that, I just say, are you willing to use your time differently to get different results? 
And if she is, great. Then we can do some strategizing. If she's not, just say, that's fine. You know, if you get to a point where you are willing to use your time differently to get different results, let me know because we could help you um, pay off those student loan debts. And like I was, you know, sharing four parties a month, 12 hours a month, you could have an extra 6000 a year on top of what you're already doing now. What if they say money is a problem? I need money, but, or I need this, but money, you know, for their starter kit. Okay, Jamie, if money is a problem, then let me tell you. First off, I had to write a post-it check so I can understand that. But if we don't change this quickly, next year at this time, you could very easily be at the same place, not having $100. Um, so who do you know that loves you $100 worth, like a $100 Valentine's Day gift, or two people will give you $50 Valentine's Day gifts, whatever the next holiday is, early birthday, or you know, who, who's 10 people that love you $10 worth that they'll invest into your business, give them one half off shopping spree, um, they'll include that in, in their first order, inventory order, and um, then you can pay them their $10 back in your first 30 days of business. You know, four people that love you $25 worth. I want to see you be resourceful, Jamie. I'm looking for resourceful women. And I know that if women want something bad enough, they're not going to let 100 bucks come between them and their dream. You guys, be clear with what you're asking for. If someone is not going to be resourceful enough to figure out how to get 100 bucks, they're not going to build a Mary Kay business successfully. They're not going to. They're not going to. They're not going to. Um, if people say, well, I'm not the salesperson type. Okay, well, share with me, Jamie, what, what do you feel the salesperson type is? Because, you guys, you can't overcome an objection. You don't even know what it means. What does it even mean? I mean, I need to know what her experience has been with a salesperson that she doesn't want to duplicate so I can share with her how we're going to teach her not to duplicate that. Um, so what is, what, share with me what does that mean to you, Jamie, to not be a, to not be a salesperson. Um, and then I usually share, you know, this is very teaching oriented. We have more teachers and nurses than any other profession. Are you coachable? Really, that's the question is, are you coachable? Whether they're saying that it's right, um, not outgoing enough, they don't wear makeup, they've had no cosmetic experience, anything where they feel like they're ill-equipped, you know, scared, fearful, shy, are you coachable? Because if people are coachable, we can teach them how. Instead of me spending all this time overcoming all these things, are you coachable? How am I going to get my customers? Are you coachable? And if they say yes, then give them one example. Okay, is there anything else that would hold you back now from getting your starter kit? Um, the right time, you know, they're waiting for the right time. They're waiting to get married. They're waiting to get divorced. They're waiting for the kids to be in school or out of school. They're waiting for this holiday. They're waiting for this holiday to end, etc. A key skill for an entrepreneur is to be able to work through and around life, which includes holidays, it includes weddings, it includes graduations, it includes transitions, it includes you know, finances that are good and bad, it includes teens that are good and bad, it includes babies that are good and bad, husbands that are good and bad, etc. So you're going to learn on the front end how to work around that. Obviously, there's times you can do more and times that you can do less, but can you see the value of learning that skill up front? because there really isn't going to be a better time um, to learn that than it sounds like right now. Um, I have to talk to my husband. Jamie, tell me, is your husband generally supportive of what you do? I want to see. I mean, is this a guy that, is she using him as an excuse? Because she'll say, oh, yeah, he lets me do whatever I want to. He's always supportive. Okay, great. So he's going to be supportive. So what's your answer? What's holding you back from getting your starter kit? Because then it's like, I need to get to the real objection. It's not really her husband. There's something else with her. What's holding you back? If she says, well, he's going to probably, you know, have some questions. Okay, great. What questions is he going to have that I didn't answer? What's he going to want to know? And she may tell me some things that he wants to know. And I'm going to say, okay, Jamie, um, have you ever had to convince your husband of something? You know, get your way, convince him to think of things your way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know how to do that? Great. Okay, I don't know your husband. I don't know your relationship, but you know how to do that. You, you can figure this out. You know how to get your husband to buy into this starter kit and you starting this business. Um, and also, to Jamie, I mean, how you do it. If, if my husband came to me and said, oh, gosh, like I'm thinking about doing this business, but I don't think I really could do it. I don't think I have time. I, you know, I'm not really sure. I, I'm kind of shy, and, yeah, I need $100. Like, I'm not going to be jumping up and down to, you know, support him in doing this business either. We need to coach her to go to him in confidence. 
How, everyone has a sign around their neck saying, make me feel important, and what's in it for me? So what's in it for him? How is her being successful at this going to benefit him and their family? And so coaching her and how to go and talk to him. This is important, too, when you work with young girls. When I, my daughter was starting in, in college, um, I realized I needed to coach those girls and what they said to their mom because them coming home and saying, oh, yeah, I need, um, a, I need $100, you know, when they're already sucking their parents dry or their parents are, you know, putting all this money into their education and, or they're asking for monies for inventory, you need to coach them in how to have those conversations. Um, I need to pray about it. Honestly, I mean, I just tell them, I, I believe that, um, I mean, why would God not want you in something that can give you blank, blank, and blank that you need, and I believe you've been praying for, with a company that was started by a Christ follower based on God, family, and career, and connected you with someone who also um, believes and lives their life and teaches someone how to build their business around that priority system. I, I, I feel pretty comfortable saying that God would have no problem with any of those things, but I do, I have found that women probably already have been praying um, for something. This is just coming in a very different answer than you probably expected. But isn't that how God works? It's usually, his answers are usually very different than ours. Or people are going to say, I need to think. And um, think, I want to say, share with me, what are you going to be thinking about? Because in your head, you can't come up with the answers. So share with me, like, what would be one of the things you're thinking about? And then they'll say, well, how do I get my customers? Okay, great question. You're asking a how-to question. How-to questions mean that you need training for them. First off, that tells me that you're thinking about doing it because people who aren't don't think of how-to questions. But you're going to torture yourself with how-to questions. And it tells me that you probably have a lot of um, – you have an analytical personality, and so um, you like to be informed. You are not going to want to wing it. You're going to want to be well-educated. You need to get your consultant number, like ASAP, like right now, so you can go on to Mary Kay and touch and have access at your fingertips 24-7 to information, answers to any questions between the company's website and my national's website. You can have everything you need to know. So share with me what else would hold you back from getting your starter kit. So hopefully, you guys, that's helpful. Um, we could go on and talk about this for hours. But like Jamie said, the, the best way that you become proficient at recruiting is by doing it. And then after you get done with those interviews, for the people who, if they're not interested in it, then who do you know? Or if you get to the point where if they just keep giving me excuse, 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 and they aren't willing to change how they think or anything they do to get a different result, then I just want to know who do you know that needs to hear this information that you think would be you know, great on my team from what you've heard. And then get, ask permission to follow up. Could I invite you to future events or um, things that I think you would enjoy? And then also, I mean, if you really do like her, like Jamie, if she didn't sign up with me, I'd be saying, okay, Jamie, if you ever do this, please promise me that you're going to call me. I'm going to stay in contact with you, but I want you on my team if you do this. You guys say that clearly to people because then they know it makes a difference who they sign up with. They need to know that because otherwise they don't know that. So hopefully you guys can see with doing the four-part recruiting play, if you have 10 parties and you pick two people to do interviews with, that's 20 interviews. That's five recruits. Those are people that they're going to get inventory because they've seen product exchanging hands. They've seen your roll-up bags. They've seen your sets. They do parties. So what I want you guys to do is make a list. When you get off this call, make a list of past hostesses you've had, target market customers you have, or those who are influential that you know. Second thing, I want you to highlight your date book. Okay? Highlight your date book. When do you have events? And when do you have times that you can do facials and parties? Third thing, I want you to pick your dialogue of what you're going to say. You know, I always tell my consultants under my, on my website, under new consultants in my training packet, the Power Start Dialogue, you use that same dialogue. And you guys, the people who aren't getting results aren't using that dialogue. They're, like, changing it. I want you to leave your dialogue. I want you to box it to your director. I love Voxer because I don't want you to tell her what you're going to say. I want you to say it to her because I guarantee you just a couple changed words or misplaced words or intonations can make all the difference in the world. What's your dialogue to book these parties? I highly recommend the fourth thing. You book in my dialogue. It's, 
you know, it's a classic, you know, power start dialogue. If you're a new consultant, you know, hi, Jamie, this is Dawn. Oh, my gosh, you, you're never going to believe this, but I'm a brand new consultant in Mary Kay. And so I'm really excited to build my business because I am so excited to get out of my job that I went to college for. I cannot stand it. It is killing me. And so part of my training, I get, and so you're telling them why you're doing it because these people know you. Um, if you're not new, you just use this dialogue and you say, I'm in a leadership training program and I've been challenged. I have to do 10 parties this week. Um, I have to get 30 people's opinions of the products this week. These are the times that are available, blank or blank, which is better for you. So the reason why you're calling them can change. The dialogue doesn't. I need 30 people's opinions of the product. I have always booked the face first. Okay, which is better for you, Jamie, Monday night at my studio or at this event or Thursday at 4? Um, and then, okay, Jamie, I need 30 people's opinions. So if you could have two friends invite you, I can give you blank. You know, is it a face brush? Is it a brush set? Is it, you know, microderm? fat hands, whatever. Um, so because if she doesn't do a party, I at least have the face because I can double, triple, quadruple book those. You guys, some people aren't going to do parties. I'm one of them. I invited my roommate to join me, but if she would have just asked me for a party, I don't think I would have done it because first off, I was working 80 hours a week. I don't like parties. I don't like party plan parties. Honestly, I don't. And so a lot of high Ds don't, they're not party people. And you don't want to miss out on a lot of those high Ds because they make really good directors and national sales directors, but they may not ever do a party for you. So don't miss out on them. Book the face. Try and turn it into a party. And if it doesn't, you still have the face. So, you know, your meetings and events are on your calendar. You have a goal for the number of guests that you're going to have during the week to your meetings and events. You have a goal for the number of faces that you're going to get the products on for the week. And the combination of those two should support your team building goal. So for instance, if you, want, if you said you were going to be a red jacket, by the end of January, you need 15 people that you talk to about the opportunity, 15 interviews. So you know, 15 interviews, how many faces is that? Are you going to get 15 interviews out of 30 faces? Probably not. I mean, I, you probably want 60. Usually it's four times the amount of um, interviews for faces. So if you want 15, then you'd have um, 60. So you're doing 60 faces between now and the end of the month. Um, so if you need five people to go on target for your car, multiply it out. You know, it's 25 interviews. It's 100 faces. So where, where do you want to be career path-wise? Again, director is your unit size. Consultants, senior consultant, red jacket, team leader, on target car, DIQ, done with DIQ. Where do you want to be by 131? Where are you going to be? And that's the last two weeks of this push program. I think it's a fantastic time for a 10-party week. Where are you going to be by 215? Where are you going to be a month from now? Where are you going to be by the end of February? You know, by the end of February, I, everyone in the push program minimum, I think, should be your two qualified for your career conference dinner. If you don't know about that, check it out online. I mean, really, you can follow the food to the top in Mary Kay. But that, I mean, I would love at career conferences all over the country that our push participants are at those. I don't want anyone left behind on that. You guys, just a reminder as I close, someone else's dream is attached to yours. And, you know, we're really so fortunate that we get to work, that we get to build our team, that we get to promote ourselves, that we get to be in control of our finances and our financial future. You guys, that's a totally different perspective that I have to go book a 10-party week. I have to go get some leads. I have to go find some recruits. We get to versus have to. Totally different attitude, totally different energy level it gives you. So, I'm hoping that this is helpful for you, and I just um, am excited to see where all of this push one ends you, all pushes you to, where does your activity um, take you now that your thoughts have been pushed to a new level. Thank you very much, you guys, and thank you for dialing in. We'll be back together next Wednesday. <music>